welcome to my show called It's Your Health. Our show here is designed to empower you with knowledge and information to make healthy choices in your life. My topic tonight is on a compound called CoQ10. And, you know, CoQ10, this compound is found in the mitochondria of all cells in the body. It's produced in our body. Now, the mitochondria, what is that? Well, it's a cell organelle. It's a component within the cell that is the factory, the powerhouse, so to speak, that generates our energy supply. And that energy that our cells use is called ATP for short, uh, for adenosine triphosphate. This is a very powerful antioxidant, CoQ10, and it's sometimes referred to as a miracle nutrient. It's also called ubiquinone. Uh, this compound buffers free radicals and protects the body as well as supplying the body with energy and the mitochondria of all cells of the body, you know. A lot of times, you know, doctors will prescribe statins, and statins are to lower cholesterol. These are patients with high cholesterol. And they work by blocking an enzyme in the liver that is needed for the production of cholesterol, but this enzyme also is needed for the production of CoQ10. The reduction of cellular cholesterol production is the strategy for reducing cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular risk by lowering cholesterol levels with the enzyme HMG, CoA reductase inhibitors. This is what a statin is. We call these drugs statin or the class of drugs that uh, affect this enzyme, HMG, CoA reductase, as statins. You know, they're commonly prescribed for cholesterol lowering. Uh, treatments. This class of drug, the statin, inhibits the activity of this enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, which is a key regulatory step in cholesterol synthesis and production. You know, since cholesterol levels in cells are tightly controlled, cholesterol is very important in many cellular functions. You know, we need it to make hormones, for instance. When you stop cellular cholesterol synthesis, this causes the cell to respond by an increased activity of the low-density lipoproteins, the LDL receptors, on the cell surfaces. Now, LDL, which we call the bad cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein, you know, we refer to it as this, is, has an effect on pulling these LDL particles out of the bloodstream and into the cells. Statins may also reduce heart disease risk by reducing the inflammation in the vasculature. The statins can potentially cause many serious side effects in some individuals, most common being muscle pain or weakness we call myopathy. You know, you might know somebody who was taking cholesterol medication and started having cramps in their, in their calves, in their legs, and the doctor had to take them off. The prevalence of myopathy can be as high as 33% in community-based studies and may rise dramatically in statin users who are active, up to 75% statin-treated athletes. Occasionally, statins may cause an elevation of the liver enzyme we call aspartate aminotransferase, AST for short, and alanine aminotransferase, which is ALT. These are liver enzymes. These enzymes can be monitored by doing a routine blood chemistry called the complete metabolic profile. Additionally, by inhibiting this HMG CoA reductase enzyme, you know, it reduces the production of cholesterol, but other metabolites as well. Statins will reduce the levels of critically important antioxidant molecule, the CoQ10. Many cardiologists now recommend CoQ10 for their patients who are on statins. You know, if you're on a statin right now and you're not taking CoQ10, please talk to your physician about adding this supplement to your medication. In September of 2015, there was an issue of the pharmacological research published and the results of a meta-analysis of six trials which affirm an association between the treatment of statin drugs with reduced plasma levels of CoQ10. CoQ10 enzyme is involved in the production of energy in the mitochondria, as I mentioned, and it's also found in all the cells. While best known for its cardiovascular benefits, growing evidence has linked 
CoQ10 protective ability to other areas, including the brain and nervous system. For the analysis, you know, this was done through the University of Lotz in Poland, uh, but selected a six placebo controlled trials that investigated the impact of atrovastatin, prevastatin, and rosuvastatin, and simvastatin on the serum plasma CoQ10 levels. Food analysis of the data uncovered an average reduction of 0.44 hundreds micromoles per liter of CoQ10 following the treatment with statin therapy. The analysis according to the type of drug determined that the reduction of CoQ10 was significant for all four statin examined. You know, the lipophilic statins, which include atrovastatin and simvastatin, and the hydrophilic statins include the pravastatin, which are not associated significantly with different effects. And effects were significant for trials of more or less than 12 weeks of duration. This is an important fact. To our knowledge, this meta-analysis is the first to assess the effect of statins on lowering plasma CoQ10 concentrations. I am Dr. Richard Duplantis. You're watching Cox Cable Channel 16 on AOC. I want to thank you for watching my show today. It's your health. And I have many requests for previous episodes, so this is where you can find them. If you go to the internet, to YouTube, and scroll in the search for It's Your Health AOC, you'll find many of my previous episodes over the past year of this show. Uh, you know, we're in the summer months right now, and many people are exercising out in the sun. They are doing recreational type things in the sun as well. Uh, I want to caution you, uh, in this type of heat, we've had a uh, heat index of up to 103, 105 here in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I want to tell you to be sure to hydrate. You know, getting plenty of fluids is very, very important in this type of weather. It's so humid. Uh, plenty of water. Hydrating will prevent heat stroke. You know, also you want to wear some light colored clothes. You know, if you're working out in the sun, and you're working in the heat, uh, exposed to that, to that type of humidity, that type of temperature. You know, by hydrating, you're replacing this fluid that we lose through perspiration. Uh, it, it's very important. Also, you know, wearing light colored, colored clothes and light clothes in and of itself, you know, will also allow you to cool, allow your body to cool down during this heat. So, you know, my tip of the day for you is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Plenty of fluids during this hot and humid weather we're experiencing here now in South Louisiana. Now, I want to go back to my show and we'll resume my show for programming today. I'm Dr. Rick Duplantis and back to It's Your Health. The biological consequence of the statin-induced CoQ10 depletion may include an increased production of free radicals with consecutive damage of the mitochondrial DNA and a decrease in the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation capacity, which leads to mitochondrial dysfunction and the dysfunction or injury of the skeletal muscles. This also can cause a defective in the cell division and also cell death, which increases the tendency to malignancy when you have DNA damage. They added that CoQ10 depletion is associated with greater oxidative stress or inflammation has been reported in the elderly and in patients with arterial hypertension, diabetes, periodontal disease, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome, and Parkinson's disease. It has been suggested as a factor in fibromyalgia even. CoQ10 is a very important compound. We need it. This Meta-analysis studies showed a significant reduction in the plasma CoQ10 concentrations following the treatment with statins. To conclude, further well-designed trials are required to confirm findings and elucidate the clinical relevance of this study. In January 2013, in the issue of the Journal of American College of Cardiology, published the finding of a Danish researcher's 
of reductions in glucose tolerance and coenzyme CoQ10 in levels in men treated with simvastatin, one of the several statin drugs commonly prescribed to lower high cholesterol. You know, while these drugs are a benefit to millions of people at risk for cardiovascular events or cardiovascular disease, their effect on this CoQ10 enzyme is important. An important mitochondrial cofactor, it has not been well publicized in the mainstream medical media, however. Mitochondria are the cell's energy producing organelles, as we mentioned early on. In their introduction to this article, you know, it was stated that healthy aging and its associated remark that although statin drugs have a positive effect on the heart muscle via the increase in the antioxidant capacity and reduction of reactive oxygen species production, there is an adverse effect on skeletal muscles and has been reported. Statins associated with muscle pain has been reported in approximately 10% of sedentary patients and up to 75% in athletes. However, the increase of myopathy in clinical trials of this drug has been much lower, presumably due to a discrepancy in the definition of what is myopathy in the study. A well-known side effect of statin therapy is muscle pain. You know, up to 75% of physically active people undergoing treatment for high cholesterol experience muscle pain. This may keep people away from either taking their medication or either from exercising, both of which are very bad choices. You know, the current study included 10 men treated with a high cholesterol with simvastatin for at least one year in 10 healthy control subjects. The participants underwent oral glucose tolerance tests. They underwent muscle biopsies and they had blood testing, testing for numerous factors. Four men in the simvastatin group reported muscle pain compared to none in the controls. Among the simvastatin treated subjects, glucose levels were significantly higher during the two hour oral glucose tolerance testing in comparison with untreated men. When the tissue biopsy results were compared, CoQ10, the antioxidant enzymes catalase and manganese, superoxide dismutase, and glutathione peroxidase were lower in those tested with the drug. The present study, is, to our knowledge, is the first to demonstrate the deleterious effects on glucose tolerance in simvastatin treated patients. Furthermore, a decrease is found in CoQ10 protein content in the skeletal muscles. This is accompanied by a limitation in the maximal oxidative phosphorylation capacity to generate energy in the patients treated with simvastatin. It suggests that these observations may be part of the explanation of the most common side effects of statin treatment, muscle pain, and muscle weakness as well. In low plasma CoQ10 predicts mortality in heart failure patients, in a journal of the American College of Cardiology in October of 2008, it was featured a study from New Zealand which found that coenzyme CoQ10 levels are an independent predictor of survival in chronic heart failure patients. You know, coenzyme Q10 is a compound that occurs in all cells, which is needed for the production of energy, as we stated. Studies have shown that depleted CoQ10 levels could worsen chronic heart failure, actually. Studies have shown that depleted CoQ10 levels could worsen chronic heart failure. You know, the current study evaluated 236 heart failure patients with a median age of 77 years of age upon admission to Christchurch Hospital. Blood plasma samples were analyzed for coenzyme Q10, cholesterol, and other factors as well. The participants were followed for a period of up to 5.7 years during which 76 deaths occurred. The median range of plasma CoQ10 among the study's participants was 0.68 micromoles per liter. A 12 month follow-up that the 29 nine survivors were found to have lower plasma levels of CoQ10 compared with the 205 survivors. Over the entire follow-up period, 39% of the participants 
who had CoQ10 levels lower than 0.73 micromoles per liter died, compared with 22% of those levels were higher. The multivariable analysis determined that higher plasma CoQ10 levels, whether above the median level or greater than 0.73 micromoles per liter, were an independent predictor of survival in these patients. <clears throat> Statin drugs are known to lower coenzyme CoQ10 levels, yet their use has been associated with reduced risk of death in heart failure patients. Although participants with higher CoQ10 levels were less likely to be using statin drugs, statin therapy was not found to be independently associated with mortality. Nevertheless, the authors suggested that the failure of the recent trial of rosavastatin to elicit reduction in major vascular events in heart failure patients could be due to reduction in the CoQ10, which offset the beneficial effects of the statin drugs. We're talking about congestive heart failure, CHF, it occurs you know, when the heart cannot pump efficiently enough to meet the body's demands with freshly oxygenated blood. It affects about 5 million people in the United States per year. Within five years, medical experts predict that about half of these patients will have died of their condition, the American Heart Association, 2004. Hoping for prolonged survival, patients with CHF are typically treated with an array of very powerful medications that have been shown to increase survival, often at a very high cost. The conventional drugs used to treat CHF have significant adverse effects, and in many cases, implantation of a life-saving medical device may be necessary, or a heart transplant even may be necessary to save their lives. Studies have shown that nutrients and supplements can strengthen the heart muscle with fewer side effects than some of these powerful pharmaceuticals often used to treat this condition. CoQ10 is one of these very powerful compounds. The goal with nutrients and supplements is the same as with conventional medication. It's to slow the gradual enlargement and weakening of the heart due to congestive heart failure. This process which occurs in all forms of CHF, which is congestive heart failure, is called cardiac remodeling. Cardiac remodeling is thickening of the left ventricular wall as a result of the increased stress placed upon the heart. You know, the heart becomes larger but not more efficient in congestive heart failure. The heart gradually changes its shape, a condition we call cardiomegaly. It becomes larger and the heart tissue actually becomes thinner. Cardiac remodeling is driving force behind the reduced quality of life experienced by patients with congestive heart failure. Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Duplantis, and you're watching my show, It's Your Health, on Cox Cable Channel 16 and LUS Fiber Channel 4. My show is shown at prime time on Mondays at 8 p.m. and Friday evenings at 8 p.m. as well. I hope you'll join me and watch my future episodes of my show called It's Your Health, where you'll learn many health tips to incorporate into your daily living. I'm Dr. Rick Duplantis. Now back to the episode for today. You know, by reinforcing the heart's function, it may be possible to slow cardiac remodeling. In this regard, CoQ10 has been studied since the middle of the 1960s and present in high quantities Throughout the heart muscle, CoQ10 has many very beneficial effects, including energy production as a powerful antioxidant and stabilizing the heart's membranes. You know, I think that CoQ10 is a very important compound. It yields many great health benefits, such as greater energy, production in all cells of the body, especially the heart. It is a very powerful antioxidant, which protects us from these chemical we call free radical damage in our body and it acts as a buffer in these, in these situations. Now you might want to consider adding this compound, CoQ10, which is an over-the-counter compound similar to a vitamin to your nutritional program. You know, 
I hope that you have learned something from this program, that you may take a closer look at the compound we call CoQ10. It has many health benefits, but when you are taking medication, being treated by your physician, you know, uh, listen to your doctor. Uh, uh, you shouldn't get off of a drug without talking to your doctor first. I'm not advocating that you do not use the cardiac drugs uh, prescribed by your physician. I'm saying that, you know, this compound CoQ10 may be used in adjunctive therapy with your uh, present pharmaceutical agents, your present medication that you're taking, and it can be also an aid in strengthening your heart and increasing the energy and oxygen capacity of the heart itself. You know, I hope you've enjoyed this program on the compound CoQ10. Please like us on Facebook as we are on Facebook on, under It's Your Health with Dr. Richard Duplantis. You'll see episodes of previous shows posted there and what's coming uh, down the, the pike in the future. I want to thank you. I want to thank the director and staff of AOC for making the production of this program possible. I'm Dr. Richard Duplantis. Have a pleasant good evening and God bless you.